welcome all of us connected to this beautiful church, all of us who are part of First Unitarian's beloved community, welcome. Welcome to this blessed evening, the night before Christmas. Welcome to this time together to rejoice, to renew the bonds between us and the message and the magic and the gladness of Christmas. Gathered in our households near and far, we have this time to celebrate even in this time of great hardship and struggle, just as the very first Christmas happened in a time of great hardship and struggle. Even when times are tough, we have hope, and we have each other, and that is powerful. That is important. That is always cause for rejoicing. We have a very special Christmas celebration to share with each other now. So let's start with our chalice and a carol as we enter the Christmas story and the Christmas spirit together. We light this chalice flame as a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith community. This light burns in our hearts, and it lights our path toward harmony and justice for all. And now we've got our first carol, Deck the Hall. Usually we decorate our meeting house while we sing this song. This year we hope you've got something you've been looking forward to decorating your house with, and that you might have been saving for this moment. Well, now's the time. Let's do it. Hang the wreath, put the star on the tree, put an ornament on a mantle or a bow on your table. Whatever you've been waiting to do for your decorating or have been waiting to do anything about Christmas until tonight, grab a ribbon, draw a Christmas picture, whatever you would like to do right now. Let's do it now together to decorate our homes as we sing our opening carol together, Deck the Hall. Here we are. Friends, welcome. We have made it to Christmas Eve, a Christmas like no other, and yet still Christmas. And I don't know about you, but I hope you are ready. And I don't mean ready with presents wrapped or decorations all up or cookies baked. Those things are good, but they're not really the point of Christmas. The point of Christmas is being ready in our heart. Ready like people were ready way back in the time of the Christmas story when things were really, really hard for almost everyone. 
but they were pressing on and doing their best in the hope, in the hope that better times would come, that things would change and life would be good for them, for everyone. If you are like me after this practically year of COVID and being stuck at home way too much and tired of cooking the same food and eating the same food and seeing our friends only on screens and missing sports and choruses and hugs and grandparents and grandchildren and cousins and good friends and just being carefree for a day, just for one day. It has been hard, hasn't it? It really has. So if you are feeling that too, then you are ready, like I'm ready, beyond ready for the beauty and the power and the message of hope amidst hardship the joy, the alleluia on the winter plain. Christmas lifts our spirits with the carols and stories and rituals, and most of all, the message. The point, the hope and glory that are still always around us, that love wins, and that sometimes the biggest, most improbable miracle can happen. My friend and colleague, the Reverend Lynn Ungar, puts it this way, what a picture it makes. The dumbfounded shepherds and the stricken sheep and the cacophony of bleeding and the barking of sheepdogs, dashing and nipping all in a vain attempt at order. And over it all, the angels trying to make their shimmering voices heard. A who? Wrapped in a what? The shepherds hollered back, where are we supposed to go? Poor guys, they wanted direction, a purpose, some story of some sense of how the story might end. And all they got, all any of us ever get, was the sound of angels somewhere beyond the din, singing glory. Hosanna across the improbable night. Christmas comes just when we need it most. Our only choice now is how to receive the many gifts of Christmas. Let all our hearts prepare them room on this holy night. Imagine you are not in your home, but out in an ancient stable with thin walls and a dirt floor warmed by the bodies of gentle animals who fill it. And not only those creatures we would expect to see there, but also a humble carpenter and his wife and the baby who will be born to them. Imagine shepherds in a cold, dark, starlit field who never expect an amazing visitor who is about to appear before them. Imagine then, as now, so many people are longing for peace on earth and justice for all people everywhere. In those days, long, long ago, a decree, an announcement, went out from the emperor, Caesar Augustus. All the world should be registered so they can pay taxes to me. All the people were required to go to the town where they had been born to register. And for some people, that meant a long journey. Joseph, a carpenter, had to go all the way from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David that was called Bethlehem. Joseph went together with Mary to be registered. Joseph and Mary had to travel a long way, and they knew it would not be easy because Mary was expecting a child very soon, and she would be very uncomfortable both walking and riding on their donkey. But there was nothing that could be done about it. They had to go. So they started on their journey, traveling by day and sometimes through the dark nights 
lit only by bright stars. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have her baby, but there was no room in the inn. And the only place they could find for Mary to give birth to the baby was a stable near the inn where some goats and sheep lived. The animals were even kind enough to give up their hay-filled manger so the family could have a bed. Mary gave birth to her child in a stable, surrounded by animals, and wrapped him up in bands of cloth and placed him in the manger. At the same time, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, making sure that their sheep and goats were safe, even though the shepherds were tired and cold. It was late at night. The shepherds were drowsy. Suddenly, an angel appeared before them. to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. And this angel was truly magnificent, and the glory of God shone round the shepherds, and they were terrified. And a multitude of the heavenly hosts appeared and said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for we are bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a child of hope. Let this be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger.
With amazement and joy and delight, the shepherds went with their flocks to Bethlehem to see this baby. As the story goes, there were also three wise people from the east who were following a star to Bethlehem. They were bringing gifts to the child of hope. These wise souls followed the star until it stopped over the stable where the newborn child was lying. When the wise ones saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy and entered the stable. There they saw the child with his mother and offered their gifts that they had brought with them. Behold! Behold! It is a wondrous night. Stars and angels and shepherds and wise ones and animals all witnessing a special birth.
On this treasured night, when we celebrate the miracle of a precious birth, we also celebrate the miracles of all the infants born in the past year to people connected to our faith community. And so the children come, and so they have been coming. No angels herald their beginnings. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise people see a star to point their way to find the babe that may save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Fathers and mothers sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the wondrous sight of a new life beginning. They ask, when or how will this new life end or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night. Something holy comes into being. A new love is born again and again. Out of fear comes courage. Out of darkness comes strength. Out of loneliness comes togetherness. And so may the light continue ever growing ever spreading, one heart answering to another, mother to babe, father to child, friend to friend, never ending, ever growing, ever spreading. Each night a child is born is a holy night. And this year we celebrate in our community nine grandbabies. Davia, June, Bashirs, <whistles> Noah, William, Burns, <whistles> Maurice, Norman, Escobar, <whistles> John, Alexander, Lassie, Benjamin, Miles, Phelan, <coughs> Louisa, Elo, Piper, <coughs> Ruby, Therese, Rosenbaum, <coughs> Hudson, Steger, Wilder, Steger. Your generosity to our church's Christmas offering will support the minister's discretionary fund. This fund will be available with absolute confidentiality if desired to assist individuals and families in need within and beyond our church. We already have a fund that helps only with essentials of food and shelter. This discretionary fund has broader uses. Proceeds from this fund can be used to help a youth or a member attend a conference that they can't afford to go to on their own, or help pay for a new glasses prescription, or a babysitter for a couple that needs some help to afford a night out on their anniversary. This fund can help pay for someone's bus ticket to visit an ill family member, or buy something to aid someone with a disability, or help with an inexpensive tablet to help someone homebound connect up with all our online programs. This fund depends on your generosity. In order to meet needs we encounter throughout the year, it is Christmas, the holiday of generosity, giving, hope, and love. Let's make sure we give tonight in ways that we know will make a difference in a lot of lives in the coming year. Thank you so much for all that you give and all that you are and all that you do.
I wish you pure air and clear skies for your loves, a flock of geese and a pair of doves. I wish you trees and grass and crystal water and rainbows, cumulus clouds and laughter. I wish you silent nights, white snow, cranberries, evergreen and a bowl of cherries. I wish you appetite, zest and red apples, a hearth and wood from the maples. I wish you poems, surcease from care, a Bach suite and an Ellington air. I wish you thoughts, pleasant surprises, study and lofty surmises. I wish you places to go and not to have to, places to stay because you want to. I wish you daily bread and daily work, a bottle of wine and a bright red shirt. I wish you courage to be and will to do what love and sense have urged you to. I wish you new carols and a spray for cliches, a dog and a ride in a very old sleigh. And now, as we begin our own candle lighting here at church, we hope you will join us at home, stretching out your own candles and holding them together with us here in the meeting house, even stretched across all our households and towns. The bonds between us are strong. And as always, we share our light. I will light candles this Christmas Candles of joy despite all sadness. Candles of hope where despair keeps watch. Candles of courage for fears ever present. Candles of peace for tempest tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of hope to inspire all my living candles that will burn all the year long.
May we know the wonder of Mary, the faith of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, the beauty of the night, the hope of the light, the peace, the promise of Christmas. And this Christmas, Eve, may you be a gift to all you meet along the way, as you are to us. We carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas.